Hi class, welcome back. So now, we are going to have a new discussion on understanding the self. Now let's go to lesson 3, the self as cognitive construct. Okay, for this lesson, here are our, our objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to, first, identify the different ideas in psychology about the self. Second, create your own definition of the self based on the definitions from psychology. And third, analyze the effects of various factors identified in psychology in the formation of the self. Okay, in our previous lesson, we were, identify we were able to identify the definition of the self. Again, the self is um, unitary, the self is also independent, and also we, uh, we were able to, uh, to explain how the, de the self developed in the social, concept, social environment and in the family. Now, we are going to identify the definition of the self based on the concepts of psychology. There are various definitions of the self and other similar or interchangeable concepts in psychology. Other concepts similar to self are identity and self-concept. Now let's define first identity. Identity is composed of personal characteristics, social roles, and responsibilities, as well as affiliations that define who one is. Personal characteristics entails to our abilities and, uh, and our evident characteristics that others might describe us. For example, your friend describe you as a very polite person. So that's one of your personal characteristics. Or you think or others think and can see you that you're a very talented person. That's one of your personal characteristics as well. So personal characteristic, these are how people see you as who you are and what you think and uh, what they think your characteristics are. So these are your personal characteristics. This can be unique or you have other characters uh, or, or you have Characteristics that, uh, that others have too. For example, you are very good in playing the guitar. Your personal characteristic of playing guitar can also be similar to others. Next, social roles. Social roles entails on the our status in the society. For example, your social role is rich or poor or in the middle class, or your social role must be a student or a working student. That's your social role. Social role is defined by the society and our placement to the society. And responsibilities. Responsibilities entails to the things that we do in the society. For example, you are the eldest son in your family and you're responsible in taking care of your siblings that's your identity or you're the the group leader of your class so that's your responsibility and that's your identity next is affiliations affiliations entails to the organization organizations that we belong in for example if you're a worship leader in a Christian church, so that's your identity. So our identity can be defined by our personal characteristics, social roles, responsibilities, and affiliations. Next, self-concept. Self-concept is what basically comes to your mind when you're asked about who you are. Self-concept means of our means it is our ideas of the self. For example, you think you are a kind person, 
So that's your self-concept. Or you think that you are a talented person. So that's also your self-concept. Self-concept is your idea of the self. It's not what the society thinks, it, society thinks of you, but it is the idea of yourself. That's self-concept. All right, again, identity is different to self-concept. Identity entails to what the society is telling us who we are. Well, self-concept is, is the thing or the idea of who we think we are. That's self-concept. All right. Self-identity self and self-concept are not fixed in one time frame. They are different. Like what I've mentioned in our previous lesson, self is something that it is in ourselves. It is our own processes, our own thoughts. It's unique and it's unitary. Identity, these are the things or this is how what our society thinks of us. And self-concept is our self-ideas. Our self, yes, the ideas of our self. These three words are not the same. Self, identity, and self-concept can be interchangeable, but they are different. Now, let's define self by one of the famous psychologists, Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers captured this idea in his concept of self-schema, or our organized system or collection of knowledge about who we are. Self-concept, these are the the fragments in our mind of what we think something is. For example, family. The word family, for me, my self schema of that is the thing the things that I think of my family. For example, I'm the fourth one in our family, the fourth child in our family. So my self schema would be when someone tells the word or tells the word family, my self-schema of family would be, I am the fourth child in our family. Let's have another example. John. So John is the only child in their family. So when you say family to John, the first thing that comes into his mind would be, he's the only child in his family. Or friends. Let's have another example of the self schema friends. When I hear the word friends, I can say my four best friends. That's different to what or how John will define his friends. It might be his barcada or his best friend. Self schema is unique to every one of us. It depends on our experience on it. And it's subjective. Theories generally see the self and identity as mental constructs created and recreated in memory. Mental constructs is different to self schema because mental constructs entails to our beliefs in it. So let's have an example. Self schema for John of the family would be he's the only child, but the mental constructs would be his beliefs about the family. For example, since he's, he is an only child, he would say that every family for him would be happy and full of things <laughs> because he's an only child. But John's mental construct of the family would be different to my mental construct of my family. So my mental construct of my family would be big, very religious and traditionalist. But for him, it would be different. Mental constructs, these are, belie these are our beliefs of some things based on our experience as well. Again, self-schema, these are the things that how we see something but mental constructs these are our beliefs on it 
Now let's talk about what another famous psychologist, Freud. Freud saw that the self, its mental processes, and one's behavior as the results of the interaction between the id, the ego, and the superego. Freud believed that a behavior depends on the id, the ego, and the superego. These are actually, uh, we can actually define this as something as the um, layers of the mind, according to Freud. So let's start with id first. Id is also known as the pleasure principle. It only wants, it only needs, it only focuses on what would be pleasurable. For example, if you are thirsty, your id would be saying, drink that water because you're thirsty. So again, the id focuses only on the pleasure. The ego, on the other hand, is the, co is the reality principle. It covers on the reality aspect. Let's go back to the example. The id, I mean, you are thirsty. So the id would say, drink that water. The ego would say, wait, maybe that water is dirty. So it co focuses on the reality. All right, now let's go to the superego. The superego now is the conscience. It is the conscience and it's also the, the responsible for uh, the ideal, what is ideal. For example, if, the, if you are thirsty, the aid would say, I want to drink that water. The ego would say, wait, that water must be, must be dirty. But the e super ego would say, the water m might be dirty or not, but you should not drink it because it's, because it's not yours. So super ego plays as the conscience. It's like the angel <laughs> telling you what to do. All right. So again, that's the id, ego, and super ego. The id is the pleasure principle. Ego is the reality principle, and the super ego is our conscience and our ideal. There are three reasons why self and identity are social products. In our previous lesson, I was able to define and tell you that our self can be molded by our society. Actually, our self is molded by the society itself. But in here, there are three reasons why the self and identity are actually the products of social, of the society. First, we do not create ourselves out of nothing. Society help in creating the foundations of who we are. Like what I've mentioned in our previous lesson, our family plays a vital role in developing ourselves. That's what also this number one is trying to tell us. We ourselves, when we are young, we do not automatically know who we are. But with the, the society or the people around us, it helps us. To say who we really are. Now let's continue to number two. Whether we like to admit it or not, we actually need others to affirm and reinforce who we think we are. We have our friends and family to tell us the ideas of who they, who they think we are. Our friends can tell us, you're a very nice person. But our family tells us, you're not, you're not a nice kid at home. Our society, specifically our friends and family or our classmates or teachers, can tell us who, we, who they think you are. So that's another reason why the self, why society is a product of the self and identity. And the third one, what we think is important to us 
may also have been influenced by what is important in our social or historical context. So, our thoughts of the things that we think are important influences of what we, we think are important in our social or historical context. From within, what we think are important, for example, our schoolwork or our relationships or our crushes or our best friends tells us what is important and our priority, priority are. Those are the three reasons. Social interaction and group affiliation are vital factors in creating our self-concept, especially in the aspect of providing us with our social identity. For example, you are or you belong to a Christian social group where you are very active, you sing praises and read verses. From there, our, our membership in that organization gives us an idea of who we think we are and how people think who we are. So they might, also, um, they might think that you're a very religious or you have a religious or a spiritual person because you like to, to read verses and sing praises. Or you can also think, also think that you are a very spiritual person or religious person because you, re you read verses and sing praises. Or if you belong to a basketball league, your friends might think that you're very athletic, athletic rather, and and very and have a very leadership and strong personality because of how you move or behave inside the organization. You might you might also think the same, but that 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 does not necessarily mean that what people think of you and what you think of yourself is the same. It can be different. For example, in the basketball league, all of your friends think that you're very talented. But for you, you might think that you're not still good enough for that. It can be different. So our social interaction and group affiliation tells us of our self-concept and our identity. There are times when we are aware of our self-concept. This is called ser self-awareness. So if you already have an idea of who you think you are, it means that you are becoming self-aware. If you no longer believe on what people are saying and believe what you think who you are, you are becoming self-aware. For example, Emily is a very talented person. She believes that she can be the most uh, she can be the most talented in playing the guitar what other things of her is not important for her because she's self-aware that whenever she might not be good enough in playing the guitar she thinks that she will be in the future she's aware of her strength and weaknesses she's not boastful about it but she's aware of it so if a person knows his or her weaknesses and strengths, he or that person becomes self-aware. So that's the end of our first part for this lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know in our chat group. For now, this is our first part of this lesson and see you on the next, next part. Thank you. Bye.